fire. Let the light vanish darkness. He shall bring salvation to Israel. God fulfills the promise. Light to candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light vanish darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. Gently lead them homeward. Light three candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light vanish darkness. Lift your heads and lift by the gateway for the King of Glory. Light four candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light vanish darkness. He is coming, tell the glad tidings. Let your lights be shining. Welcome to worship for the first Sunday of Advent. There is a song that was originally written for this time of year which has been largely taken over by all the back to school sales. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And I really believe that about Advent. I love the challenge of Advent. In the midst of a culture that is so much about now, we wait. In the midst of a culture that will start a new calendar something over 30 days from now, we are starting ours today. Happy New Year. And in the midst of a culture that keeps track of naughty and nice, and naughty gets a lump of coal, we look for and wait for the one who comes because of the naughty. And he brings the nice that we call grace. There is so much about Advent that reminds us that we are in the world, but not of the world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. What? Um, it seems that we have some. We have just learned that a solitary couple has been spotted walking the lonely desert road that leads from Nazareth to Bethlehem. We've sent our own reporter out there to try and learn what their story is. Let's go live to him now. Thanks, Pastor John. I'm on the road near the couple in question. He is Joseph from Nazareth, apparently a carpenter, on his way to Bethlehem with his fiancée, whose name is Mary. And you may not be able to tell from this distance, but uh, she's really pregnant. I wanted them to answer some questions on camera, but they seem to be pretty shy people and they politely yet forcefully declined. I was able, however, to talk to them a little bit before this broadcast, so I gotta say I didn't learn a lot. I asked why they were on this lonely stretch of road all by themselves, and he said, you know, the orders from Caesar Augustus, the census and all that. When I asked if they had gotten or tried to get a waiver because, you know, Mary, he only looked up. He didn't look up at me, he looked past me and said something that sounded like it might have been from the book of the Psalms. I'm gonna to have to look that up when I get back to the studio. Uh, he said, let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. So when I asked him what he meant by that, all he said was, God will bring salvation. God fulfills the promise. 
I tried to get the woman to elaborate, but she remained silent. So, out here, it's uh, pretty much a mystery just exactly what's going out here on this dry and dusty path through the Judean desert, but I promise I will keep an eye on things and report back with any further developments. So, back to you, Pastor John. Well, thanks for that report. Let's pray that they're safe uh, on their journey out there on that lonely road. We'll be waiting to hear your next report to us. And speaking of waiting, the season we call Advent is not only about reliving the coming of Jesus into the world the first time, it may be even more about preparing our hearts so that we are always ready to welcome that day when God fulfills all the promises for all people for all time. And with that in mind, let's pray and then let's sing. We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, Rouse us from sleep that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. first reading is from Isaiah 64. Oh, that you would tear down the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations may, might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. You all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of promise. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the 80th Psalm. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? 
You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you, give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. Word of God, word of promise. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep away, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In order to take a deep breath for your spirit, to prepare yourself for this season of waiting, and to hear God's word in these words, a verse from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones who do God's bidding, who obey the voice of God's word. Have you ever been handed an important message like a telegram? I guess it's been a few years since a telegram. Like the one that was handed to President Roosevelt in that clip from Pearl Harbor when he was informed of the attack on Pearl Harbor? Or have you ever had an important message delivered to you by somebody coming up to you and whispering in your ear? 
What do you call someone who delivers that kind of information? You call them a messenger. Now, if we lived in Israel, we would be calling the one who delivered such a message a malak, the Hebrew word for messenger. And if we lived in Greece, we would call such a one an angelos. And if that sounds a lot like angel, that's because this is where our word angel comes from. It's the Greek word for messenger. And this is where we start our Advent adventure, thinking about angels. Back a thousand years or so ago, there were theologians who pondered the question, how many angels can dance on the head of a pin? Guess what? I don't have an answer for that one. But if you ask me, how many angels does it take to set the stage for the coming of the light of the world? I think I can come a little closer to an answer to that one. <clears throat> Beginning with today's gospel passage from Mark 13, Jesus says that he is going to send out the angels. Well, in the weeks ahead, we are going to encounter a variety of angels. Some of these are very familiar actors in the story of Jesus' birth and the surrounding narrative. <clears throat> Some of those even have names, like the angel Gabriel, who delivers the world-changing and life-altering message to Mary that she will bear the Son of God. The angel of the Lord, who scared the pants off of some unsuspecting shepherds with the message that was delivered on the birth of the Messiah. And Joseph encounters angel messengers no less than three different times in the events that surrounded the birth of Jesus. But there are also angels in this story by the name of Isaiah and John and Mary, who will earn their wings when they deliver their message to us during these days of Advent and then Christmas. And who knows? Maybe the work of serving God as a messenger as an angel, will also be given to you. Now, to say that an angel earns its wings when it delivers the message that has been entrusted to it reminds me of that famous scene near the very end of that film, It's a Wonderful Life. That's right. In case you've never seen that film, I don't think I'm giving anything away about the story if I tell you it is not the bell ringing that gives the angel in that story his wings. It's the other way around. The ringing of the bell signifies that that angel has completed successfully the mission to deliver a message on which he was sent. Each and every day in our lives, messages of all kinds are being delivered. And I am not here to suggest that God learned from Frank Capra's 1946 film, How to Award an Angel Its Wings. But just because you deliver a message does not make you an angel in the sense that we read about in our Bible. Because unless you've stopped your newspaper and magazine deliveries, unless you've turned off your TV and your phone and your tablet and your computer and your radio, <clears throat> you are being bombarded with messages these days, especially these days right now. And many of these messages, if not most of them, are centered around one three-letter word, buy, 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 buy. The message is so urgent that some who are trying to obey this message will go to any lengths, including spraying pepper spray in the faces of someone else in order to make sure they can buy a particularly coveted item on Black Friday. You can almost smell the fear in the general population, fear of not being able to obey this urgent message. And to underscore the importance of this message, <clears throat> the owners of the places where you can buy, 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 have encroached very greatly upon one of our sacred holidays and opened their halls of commerce 
as early as two or three o'clock in the morning so that you can relieve your fears of not being able to obey that message and you can buy, at least that's been true in just about every other year than this infamous year of 2020. And you have to understand it is the shopkeeper's compassion that leads them to do this. They don't want you to experience the fear that comes when seeing that the stores are closed and you be unable to obey that urgent message. See what love they have for their friends that they lay down their sleep for their customers. I mean, friends. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and suggest that those who are sending this message are not getting wings from God. Promotions from their bosses, maybe. Uh, a promotion from their manager at the store where they sell, maybe. But no wings from God for that. The angels God sends bring an urgent message to be sure. But if the urgent message of our culture is hearing fear, fear that you won't buy enough to make yourself happy and save the economy, the message that God's angels come to bring us is quite the opposite. I once read that in the Bible, you can find the phrase, do not fear, or fear not, or don't be afraid, a total of 365 times. And if that's true, then that is God's way of saying every single day, do not be afraid. He, God is telling us this is the message on which all the other messages are founded. Have no fear. This is certainly the message that Jesus sends. His compassionate an obedient offering of his life tells us, do not fear death. Do not be afraid to die. And his compassionate and obedient offering of his life for others also tells us, do not be afraid to live. Really live. The messengers, the angels that God will send out, and whom we will meet during this Advent season, bring this message in a variety of ways. The angel Isaiah will tell us not to be afraid, for the one who is coming will bring comfort and an end to hostility. The angel named John will tell us, don't be afraid. When you turn around, you will see the one who comes to bring good news. And the angel called Mary will tell us, do not fear. The impossible becomes possible to the one who will say, let it be. There are other angels that we will encounter in the days ahead, all of them with message that are, messages that are built on this primary message, that one is coming to call us to put aside all of our fears and live instead by faith. And so that we do not miss any of these messengers or the messages that they bring us in these coming days, Jesus begins this adventure that we call Advent by delivering the very first message himself. Keep awake. Amen. <laughs> Oh
Please join me in an Advent Creed. We believe in God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, the one who is full of patience, who is not afraid of silence, who does not need to fill each moment with activity and noise, the one who is beyond bluster and flurry, and who does not jostle for attention. We believe in God the Son, Savior of creation who slipped into Bethlehem one night, mostly unnoticed, who lived 30 years without headlines or hurry, who frequently took time alone with his patient father, who waited for the right time to become the suffering servant, who stood quietly before the noise of his accusers, whose silence overpowered their words, who died then rose again on a quiet Sunday morning. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens, empowers, renews, and refreshes, sometimes arriving with obvious power, sometimes with the quiet breath of a whisper. We believe in one God, who patiently waits for us, and who longs for us to do the same. Let us pray. Generous God, you have recreated all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. God of power and might, Tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. 
Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, and healing. Those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people in our families and congregations who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. We also pray for those hospitalized this past week, Carol Wessling and Daryl Dixon, those recovering at home, Dave Wilkins, and those receiving hospice care, Ann Colm and Don Spangler. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Time for a few announcements. First of all, um, the Thanksgiving video, which has been up all week, I'll leave up until Monday, in case you still want to use that one for a meal or any other purpose. Uh, the Zoom links for fellowship on Saturday at 5.45 and Sunday at 10.45 are below, as is the video for Growing in Grace. Uh, hopefully, in the mail this Friday or Saturday, you've received the um, newsletter for December that I sent along with an Advent devotional booklet called Prepare Ye. Um, feel free, as you read it, to call somebody else in church and talk about what you've read with them as a way of keeping us connected in these times. I encourage you to consider uh, reading some scripture for the service of Lessons and Carols that'll happen on December 27th. There are still several readings available for that one. The next drive through communion is December 13th, the second, not the third Sunday of the month. And if the weather is a little sketchy, please uh, either check my website, johnsoyster.com, or call the church. I will be here, and if it's too cold or too nasty, we will call it off. But call before you come if you're in doubt. Also, thanks to the many who responded to the call for um, Christmas gifts for some of the families at Carrollton School. Basically, everybody has signed up for everything. That's a wonderful sign of generosity. So, the creator of the stars, bless your Advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, both now and forever. Amen. Go sleeper, rise from death, and Christ shall give you light. So learn.
and His love, its length and breadth, its fullness, depth and height. To us on earth He came to bring from sin and fear release, to give the Spirit's unity, the very bond of peace. There is one body and one hope, one spirit and one call, one Lord, one faith and one baptism, one God who made us all. Then walk in love as Christ has loved, who died that he might save, with kind and gentle hearts forgive, as God in Christ forgave. For us Christ lived, for us he died, and conquered in the strife. Awake, arise, go forth in faith, and Christ shall give you life. Live in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 